Hi there and welcome to St Andrew's Roundhay on Wednesday the 9th of December for our midweek reflections. We've been very lucky to be back in church for live worship with the congregation a couple of times so far during Advent. Uh, but the one thing I'm missing more than ever, great as it has been, wonderful as it has been to see folk at church, uh, it's really, really warmed my heart to see everybody there. Um, is that we haven't been able to sing, sing any Advent carols yet, uh, and we're not going to. We have got a couple of services outside where we'll be able to sing some carols, but inside, of course, we can't. Thinking about carols got me thinking about a certain book, A Christmas Carol by a certain Charles Dickens. Uh, it's a book I read uh, probably not if every year, but every other year. Uh, at this time um, and uh, one of the bits I like about it is that it reflects the spirit of Christmas not the three spirits that come in the book they're great um, and the rest of the story is good but very near the beginning there's a conversation that takes place between um, Scrooge and his nephew Fred and it gives you the two possible approaches right at the very beginning of the book that you could take to Christmas um, I'm going to leave you to decide which approach you think you should take, but not wanting to uh, influence your answer. Go, Fred. I'm going to read you this bit, and this is where Fred appears on the scene at Scrooge's counting house. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you, cried a cheerful voice. It was the voice of Scrooge's nephew, who came upon him so quickly that this was the first intimation he had of his approach. Pa, said Scrooge. Humbug! He had so heated himself with rapid walking in the fog and frost, this nephew of Scrooge's, that he was all in a glow. His face was ruddy and handsome. His eyes sparkled. His breath smoked again. Christmas a humbug, Uncle, said Scrooge's nephew. You don't mean it, I'm sure. I do, said Scrooge. Merry Christmas! What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then, returned the uncle gaily. What right have you to be dismal? What reason have you got to be morose? You're rich enough. Scrooge, having no better answer ready on the spur of the moment, said, Bah! again. And then he followed it up with, Humbug! Don't be cross, uncle, said the nephew. What else can I be, returned the uncle, when I live in such a world of fools as this? Merry Christmas, out upon a Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money, a time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer, a time for balancing your books and having every item in them through a round of dozen of months of months present dead against you? If I could work my will, said Scrooge indignantly. Every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. He should. Uncle, pleaded the nephew. Nephew, returned the uncle sternly. Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, returned Scrooge's nephew, but you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone then. Much good it may do you. Much good it has ever done you. There are many things for which I have derived good, but which I have from which I have not profited, I dare say, returned the nephew. Christmas among the rest. But I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it's come around, apart from the veneration due to its sacred name and origin, if anything belonging to it, can be apart from that, as good a time, as kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year, when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely, and to think of people below them as if they were really fellow passengers to the grave, and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, uncle, it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, 
I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. I love that thing and I love Fred's approach to Christmas uh, and the way of encouraging people, everybody to open their hearts. That's what this season is about. And that's why, uh, as I said, we need Advent. We need Christmas more than ever this year. Um, yes, we're doing it differently uh, and we're going to have to, whether that be at home, at church, uh, out in the street, carol singing, whatever it is uh, that we're doing. But the spirit of Christmas, the bit that's in here, the bit that matters, not the presents and all the stuff that goes, the trimmings that go along with it, that's the important bit and that's the bit we can do because that's when we reflect on the birth of our Saviour who came and changed the world. And changed us with it. I want to read to you uh, an Old Testament passage which was given for last Sunday. Not all of it, just a small bit from Isaiah chapter 40, the first five verses. Um, and it's part of the prophecy that comes that we share uh, when we're thinking of John the Baptist and his message about Jesus coming uh, to save the world. So beginning at Isaiah 40, uh, verse 1. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that she has, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. And uneven ground shall be become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Fred and Scrooge each have their own ideas about Christmas, about the spirit of Christmas. Ask yourself this year, what is your approach to Christmas and what really matters? We are on a journey together, whether we like it or not. And I think we should embrace that. I want to... Um, share with you uh, a prayer which comes from Wild Goose Publications and the Iona community and it's from a book called Candles and Conifers uh, and the prayer is called Advent Intercessions and there's a response in it when I say we are waiting for Jesus please feel free to join in with the response come and live with us soon so when I say waiting we are waiting for Jesus please respond come and live with us soon. Let us pray. We are waiting for Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting because we know you are the creator of the world, the God who took on human form, the son of Mary, a girl just like any other girl, we are waiting, Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting because we have faith in you. We know that we can trust you. We remember that you are good to us. And we thank you for all the good things that you give to us every day. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting here, here in Leeds, waiting for you to come into our houses, our streets, our shops, our offices, the places we are and the places that are absent. All these places, fill them with your light and your peace. We are waiting, Jesus, come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting for you to come and change things. 
to bring health to our sick ones, to make our asylum seekers welcome, to comfort those who have lost loved ones, and to turn us around so that we can be your hands and feet, your ears and eyes in this world that needs you so much, now more than ever. So we are waiting, Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Amen. Thank you for listening today. Um, keep safe and don't forget to think about what attitude you're taking to Christmas this year. God bless.